Welcome back to Sailing El Haleo! Last week when we left off, we were in Jackson Creek, finishing up a couple of chores. From there, we hopped back out into Chesapeake Bay, and we made a long run down to Hampton, Virginia, which is right across from Norfolk. We stayed in Hampton uh, for a couple of days, and from there we crossed the James River and went down the Elizabeth River to Great Bridge, Virginia, where there is a lock that you have to go through. The Great Bridge Lock and the Great Bridge Bridge, which is a bascule bridge. From there, we continued down the Intracoastal Waterway and we made it through Kiratuck Sound and we actually entered into North Carolina. Uh, we stayed in North River before crossing Albemarle Sound and making our way down Alligator River. And I'm not sure if we'll get all that distance this week, but we'll see how far we can get. I guess we might as well go ahead and get right into it. Grab a drink, climb aboard, and let's get going. After spending way too much time in Deltaville, Virginia, we were chomping at the bit to get back on the road. We had only planned on staying in Deltaville for two nights, and that was just to wait out some 30 knot winds in the bay. But that's when our engine flooded for the second time, and I correctly diagnosed the problem, and then we had to wait on the replacement part. So it ended up being six or seven days that we were in Deltaville. And we were a little bit behind schedule, and we had a nice day where once we got out in the bay, I knew it was going to be a little bit rough, but we were going to have winds from a direction that we could use. So we decided to make a run down to Hampton, Virginia. The very last leg down the bay can be the most treacherous. The weather reports really don't mean anything, and I've learned to be ready for everything, <laughs> because you never know what's going to happen. Our first trip down to Hampton, the weather was projected to be nice and calm, flat, glassy seas, and we ended up getting hit on the stern by four to five foot waves every four seconds. So that was a wild ride, and I didn't have anything put away downstairs, and I got the dogs downstairs, stuff was flying everywhere, I broke one of my induction cooktops, I thought the dogs might be dead. It was a chaotic ride. So for that last trip, you know, the Northern Bay, it's narrower. You kind of know what to expect up there. You know, you can leave your dishes out and stuff. On this, the uh, south end of the bay, make sure you have everything put away securely before you get there. One of the absolute joys of single-handing a boat with no autopilot is sometimes things happen and you just can't do anything about it. You know, stuff will fall downstairs, cameras will fall upstairs, you know, sometimes you just have to let stuff ride, <laughs> because you can't leave the helm for more than, you know, maybe 10 seconds at most, even in the bay, if the, the boat will start rounding up in the wind, and then stuff happens when you leave, so, you know, you just, you kind of have to stay there, and I hope to get the autopilot situation rectified uh, this, this next off-season, but we'll see how that goes. When we round the point at Fort Monroe and we leave Chesapeake Bay and enter the James River, it's kind of a milestone for us. Uh, Chesapeake Bay is not an official part of the Intracoastal Waterway, but it presents a significant challenge. Now, Chesapeake Bay can be a lot of fun. It's a great place, a lot of great anchorages, lots of great little towns. It can be wonderful, and it can also be an absolute nightmare. Uh, you do have to be a little more cautious when you travel. You have to pay a lot more attention to the wind and the weather and all of that stuff. You know, a lot of the Intracoastal Waterway is kind of immune from weather. Um, they're inland rivers and uh, canals and that kind of stuff. And you can travel those even if there's a 30 knot wind. Now you certainly w can't do that in Chesapeake Bay. Um, I'm sure some people do, but that's, you know, <laughs> that's not for us, you know, but it's okay. We're, uh, you know, we're not heroes. We're we're fair weather travelers and I'm okay with that. <laughs> so we're, we're very risk averse and uh, yeah, I have no problem with that. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I know people go out there, but that's, that's, we're, we're, that's just not us. So anyway, uh, leaving Chesapeake Bay and entering Hampton is a big milestone for us. It's leaving one part of the, you know, our journey south behind us and it's starting an, uh, the next leg. Every time we're in Hampton, we stay at the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel Anchorage, and it looks like it would be very exposed, but it's actually surprisingly calm. The mouth of the anchorage, which is one of the busiest shipping lanes in the world, uh, you actually don't get much swell. As the ships enter and exit the James, Ri James River, 
they're actually going very slowly so even a container ship doesn't throw off that much wake and it, it ends up being a very calm anchorage and you wouldn't think it would be but it turns out to be that way and while we were there we threw a little party you know getting out of chesapeake bay is one of our milestones so we stayed there for two or three days we grilled multiple days we drank some beers went for dinghy rides and we just had a good time After relaxing for a few days in Hampton, we got back on the road, and we left Hampton actually before sunrise. Hampton is a very easy place to navigate. It is one of the largest ports in the world. You don't have to worry about crab traps or floats or anything like that. And most of the boats in that area have AIS, or they definitely have navigation lights so you can see them. Now we left so early because the wind was projected to get quite, uh, quite punchy that day, and we knew if we left early we could make it across the James River and uh, into the Elizabeth River before it got sporty. And the James River, can, it's deceptive, it can get very sporty, especially with all of the ship traffic going in and out, it can be a little unpredictable as well. So we like to just bypass all that and get up early and go. Another great thing about getting out of Chesapeake Bay is going through Norfolk. Now Norfolk is just eye candy. Like I've said before, I love all this technological stuff. I'm not a big military person. Um, you know, I think we should have a little more peace in the world maybe, but you know, uh, I'll just leave it at that. And I absolutely love this. I call this Battleship Row. It's where all of the military ships are lined up. This is our largest uh, naval port in the US. And it's just fascinating looking at all this stuff. I call it Battleship Row. I did get excoriated after one video for that because there are no battleships there. I don't know, I guess we stopped using battleships in the past. I don't know what they're called. I know there are some aircraft carriers. Um, I don't know what all the other ship types are, but they're just a lot of fun to look at. They're just so cool. Uh, all the engineering that goes into them. The entire Norfolk area is one big port. It's just, there's so much engineering and technology and science in that area. Uh, it, it's a real stark contrast to being, you know, in the, uh, the grasslands, the tidal estuaries of Georgia. It's just, you know, two contracting things, and I love them both, you know, they're, they're both fans, fantastic. And this really is a view that you just don't get to see, you know, most people don't even know this is there. They don't ever get to see it. Traveling by boat opens up so much of this country. There's this entire subculture uh, the water community, you know, the waterways work just like roads. I mean, it's absolutely fascinating. And most people just cross a bridge. Oh, yeah, there's, you know, such and such river, whatever. And they don't even think about it. It's, oh, I've learned so much about this country and about all of this. It's just, this is an entirely different uh, country that exists within our country and and most people don't even realize it it's just i don't even know how to describe it <laughs> After going through downtown Norfolk, we continued down the Elizabeth River to Great Bridge, Virginia. And there is a lock that you have to go through in Great Bridge and also the Great Bridge Bridge. So coming into coming up to the lock, it was a little frustrating. There were about 10 boats there waiting to get into the lock. And we could all fit in the lock easily. That's not an issue. But this, I guess, apparently was a, an abnormally high tide, and that certainly does happen but they couldn't operate the lock while that was going on, so we had to wait for two hours. Now, that wouldn't have been a problem if they had just told us about it. <laughs> if they told us it was going to be that long, uh, you know, we all could have anchored and, and been comfortable, but we're all waiting for the lock to open, and they're not giving us any times, and we're all trying to idle, and the current is pushing us towards the lock, and this river is actually quite narrow. It gets very shallow on the sides, so... We were trying to dance around each other and not hit each other for two hours, which was a little frustrating. You know, in, in one of my first several years of boating, that would have I would have just absolutely been fuming and steaming. Uh, it used to piss me off something. Un, it used to make me ir, ir, uh, irrationally mad when I'd have to wait for a bridge. You know, if I had to wait a half an hour, it, it would really irritate me. And thankfully, I've gotten rid of that mindset. You know, when I was working... I always wanted to do my job as efficiently as possible because the most valuable thing was my time. So 
I wanted to minimize my time at work to maximize my time away from work. And luckily I had a job where I didn't have to work nine to five. I just had to get my job done. So I became very efficient uh, to get my job done in as little time as possible. And I carried that mentality over to boating for the first several years. So when I felt like my time was being robbed from me, I would get angry. And then I realized this is this is how I want to spend my time. That this is why I'm here. This is my time. <laughs> Which sounds so stupid, but you know, when you've been working for 40 years, it's an entirely different mindset to get in. And now waiting for stuff doesn't doesn't bother me. You know, if I have to wait for a bridge, absolutely no no problem. And these bridges are getting replaced at a at a pretty rapid rate. I would much rather keep this old school engineering. Uh, in place. It really gives a character to the Intracoastal Waterway. Once we get rid of all of our bascule bridges, our swing bridges, our lift bridges, you know, just the Intracoastal Waterway loses a little piece of its soul every time one of these um, relics is replaced. So I never get mad uh, worrying, waiting for that stuff anymore. Now this was a little irritating because if they would have just told us we could have um, we could have avoided the you know the the dancing that we had to do but it is what it is so at the end of the day we got into the lock all of us and we got through the lock into the into great bridge now one of the great things about great bridge is they do have free docks so you can tie up your boat uh, to the side of the dock there's one on the east side and I've got alarms and alerts going off sorry for that <laughs> but, but there's one free dock on the west side of the bridge and then one on the east side of the bridge and I was hoping to get one of those free docks. Now, there were a lot of boats here, and I think I was fourth or fifth in line. And that's another reason why I left Hampton so early is because I wanted to get to Great Bridge because I wanted to do a little bit of reprovisioning um, to buy some stuff in Great Bridge. And if I could tie up at that free dock, it would be awesome. Now, I did end up getting a spot. I got, I think, the last spot on the, what would it be? It would be the east side, no, the west side of the bridge. So that was nice. And everyone that was in the lock did get a free dock. You know, uh, a lot of times people will ask if they can raft up, which I absolutely would have no problem with. Um, so sometimes boats will come later on at night and there, there won't be any free spaces left. So they'll actually tie up to a boat that's tied up to the dock. <laughs> So, you know, that is an option too. So uh, it's just a little bit of a pain in the butt, um, especially with the dogs, if people are walking across your deck to get off the boat. But, you know, I, have, I would have absolutely no problem with that either if that had to happen. So it is what it is. We got a spot and life was good. And as per usual, I blabbered on a little bit too long in this and we didn't get as far as I thought we might, but you know what, that's okay. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed. And that's all we have time for this week. I would like to give a massive shout out to my Patreon crew. Without your guys' support, I wouldn't make these videos. And my Patreon crew is Joan and Juddy Judnick, Val and Chris Alcorn, Denise and Eli Sackett, Sherry Erickson, Deb Shaw, Matthew Spotton, Peter Allen, and Natalie Linehan. Thank you guys so very much. Your support really means the world to me. I do have one legacy patron member, and her name is Joan Linbo. Unfortunately, she has passed on, but she lives on in our hearts forever. We really miss you, Joan. If you are interested in joining our Patreon crew, there is a link in the description down below, and that'll take you to our Patreon page where you can sign up. And there are hundreds, literally hundreds of extra videos and photos of our travels, and I try and keep everything there up to date and post at least once or twice a week. So it gives you a little peek behind the curtain. If you do like our videos, please like, comment, and subscribe. That'll help us out more than you'll ever know. And that actually doesn't cost you anything. So hit that like button. Alrighty, I hope you all are well, and we'll see you next week.